We know that we've let the Mexican people down, but we didn't do it on purpose. Like, this just happens. It was just bad luck. But to come there and play a stadium, oh my God, like, who would have thought, you know? So, like, we're, we're, we're excited, trust me. So, it's great to talk with you, and thanks for taking the time. Uh, it seems to be, like, a bit of bad luck surrounding... Blink 182 shows in Mexico City lately between Travis injury and the recent illness that canceled the April show. So Mexican fans are starting to feel like a bit cursed. I bet. Yeah, we got so sick. Um, I got really sick. Mark had a really bad lung infection and it's just like we couldn't do those shows. It was just like such a pain. Um, but it happens. And uh, even before that, Travis broke his finger and had to have surgery. We're just like, oh, it wasn't about Mexico. It was like all of South America, but we were able to complete most of it. Um, I got sick again in the United States, so it's not just Mexico. It uh, it was Ohio and Michigan, and like that, that lasted for like two weeks. We had to cancel some shows there too. You know, it just happens. You know, especially with like COVID and everything going around. It's just everything's been so hard to travel, but um, but we're all good now. So we're coming back. That's great. I mean, I've been a fan, uh, uh, I had a chance to saw you live in 2004, and I think the connection between the band and the Mexican fans has always been incredibly strong. Uh, so I want to ask you, uh, what does it that mean to you? Uh, whenever I hear the, the ole 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 during dance with me, I'm reminding of kind of the impact Latin American fans have, that have on the band. Yeah, no, I mean, I grew up in San Diego, California, so the Latino culture is huge um, in San Diego. I mean, I, my, uh, my, my mom, her side of the family is, uh, our, speak Spanish, Latino DNA all the way through. Um, Mexican food is my favorite food on earth. The Mexican culture is pretty much half of the culture in San Diego because we live so close to Mexico. Um, so, uh, the Ole Ole, when I put that in the song, I, I just always, I was dreaming that we would play Mexico at some point. And that's like the one part everyone knew instantly, you know, like that everyone would know that part. And it's totally been that way when we're going through South America. So it's not really a, foot, you know, a soccer game. Um, but, uh, but it works still at a concert. I think, uh, Blink has always been more than a band. Uh, I think it's a symbol of friendship. Uh, and you've been all through so much together, both personally and professionally. So, uh, what does being in Blink mean to you right now, considering everything you accomplish and overcome? Yeah, Blink is much more than a band. It's it's a it's a cultural thing um, around skateboarding and punk rock music and friendship. And um, you know, Travis survived a plane crash. Mark survived cancer. Um, it shows like kind of three brothers over 30 years have gone up and down, but kept it together barely. Um, and now we're in a better place than we've ever been. Um, we can't believe that we have this. We're very grateful. Um, we, um, we're kind of blown away by how the band just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's almost like people all kind of understand it now back years ago. That wasn't the case. I think people are like, oh, these are dumb jokes. And what are these songs? And like, what is this? You know, but now it seems like everyone goes, oh, it's kind of like a celebration of friendship in that kind of, you know, culture of growing up and being an outcast and not getting a real job and not playing a normal sport. You know, like skateboarding is about, you know, for me, I was a skateboarder. It's growing up being, you know, an individual and claiming your place within the group as unique from everyone else. And it's celebrated the more unique you are. And um, that's why so much cool art and fashion and all this stuff comes from the skateboarding culture. Um, so uh, the Beastie Boys were like that too. They were skateboarders playing punk music and grew and did what they did. Um, so uh, we're, we kind of look at ourselves as students of a band like that, you know, a group like that. And I think uh, taking a break from the band must have been a significant decision and i want to ask you about what it was like uh, watching the band from from a distance and and the personal growth or reflections that did you gain during that time and 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 then coming back together uh, personally i think this is 
the best era for Blink-182. I mean, the band sounds more mature, complete, fulfilled than ever. Uh, so how could you describe this period and this feeling? Well, it's hard. You know, you, you start a band when you're a teenager and then you get married and you have kids and then you, you realize in life you want to do other things. You want to try other things. You don't only want to do one thing. And that's that starts to become a conflict with the other members of the band. And that's why you see so many bands growing up not getting along because they're basically not just teenagers with nothing else but the band. Now they're adults with kids and families and aspirations to try other things and they're artists and they want to challenge themselves in different ways. And, and not everybody in the band agrees They're like, you know, on how to be together and allow that. And I think what you saw with Blink was that happening was we weren't just three guys in our music. We were three guys with wives and kids and other things we wanted to do. And then you start arguing with each other about priorities and like how it affects the band and this and that. So um, it's very normal. And that's why it's so rare that you see a band last this long. But because of the, the plane crash, because of the cancer, because of the friendship and the resolution that we had with each other, I think you could see that we're a better band now than we've ever been. We're more comfortable um, than we've ever been. We're writing better music than we ever have. We're playing better than we ever have. Um, the shows are funnier, I think, than because we're just up there having fun. We're not like we're not up there trying to um, prove ourselves. We kind of know we're cool, you know. <laughs> we just like well, fuck it. Like we we're cool. We do what we do, and um, the confidence is back. Um, like when we first started. Uh, not that we had that much confidence when we first started, we just thought everything else was fucking crazy. And we were like, ah, all this is crazy shit. We don't know what this music industry is. This is who we are. And there's a, there's a confidence in that. But now we're like, we know how to play music and we know how to do it fucking good, you know? And we know that we're pretty fucking cool. And uh, so we don't have to prove anything to ourselves or to anybody else. And I think that confidence, it goes really far um, in the shows. You know, and, it, and, and when you look at the band now, it, I think it's very apparent to people. Yeah. Old songs, new songs, everything on the live performances, magnificent. And oh, I, thank you. I, I can feel this uh, energy. It, it, it's, it's going on. And, and I have to ask you, it, it will lead to create new music, something else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blink has got, like, we have just started. We feel like we just started the band. That's what it feels like. So the things that are coming next are going to completely outshine anything we've ever done musically, creatively. Um, and hopefully our dick jokes will be better than they've ever been, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. Uh, uh, you, you just mentioned about uh, other interests that, that, that you have outside the band. And, and of course, one, one of the main interests that you have is uh, the interest in the paranormal and Uf in UFOs. So I want to ask you about what what first sparked that uh, interest in you. I was always fascinated that, that the world is more complex, the universe is more complex than, like I never wanted a normal job, I never wanted, I look like everyone's depressed. They get married, they have kids, they have a job, but they're not happy, they're not fulfilled. And I was always drawn to the unexplained because those unexplained things are happening and no one understands what they are. But if you really take the time and you really search it out, you'll find that there's a completely new, fascinating way to learn about how the universe is constructed. Um, and then once you start to understand that, you start to realize that we've been doing it wrong. We've been searching out fulfillment and happiness wrong. We've been treating each other wrong. We've been working too hard for things that that don't even matter and once you understand a little bit about the architecture of the universe with consciousness and the way you know the way life exists and the way it interacts with each other it's fucking mind-blowing and um and it will change your life it'll change how you see yourself and how you see the world and how you interact with it and then it becomes much easier to be and exist in this world um reality is not what we think it is um we are not alone uh time is not what we think it is the paranormal is not weird it's just stuff that we're starting to be able to measure with science now we couldn't measure it before so we would just say it's religion you know but that's not what we're learning now and the government in the united states and other governments of the world now know this but they don't know how to tell everybody so i spent a lot of time 
working my way into those groups in the government and saying, look, let me communicate this stuff for you. You know, and so what people are seeing with what I'm doing with my company to the stars and the movies we're making, the books we're putting out and all that kind of stuff is we're, I'm going to start explaining to people how this all is. And it's wild and it's fascinating and it's different and it's scary, but it's also exciting. You know, um, the next 10 years are going to change mankind like forever and we're never going to look uh, back. Uh, given the interest in UFO sightings in Mexico City and near the area. Oh, yeah. Epistar I know all about it. <laughs> no, I know all about it. Uh, you guys are a hot spot, always has been. Yeah. Um, they tend to congregate, congregate and have hot spots in places where people have a lot of Um, where religion is very important to them, where spirituality is very important to them, where they're very passionate, very emotional. Um, Latino culture has all those things, not only in Mexico City and South America and Italy. Um, so you'll see a lot of the UFOs showing up in places where they're more at, they're more ready to see it and, and interact with it. And a lot of times religion and spirituality makes people looking for it more often Then when you go to another country where they're not very religious and they're not very spiritual um and you know without going down the rabbit hole here you know it's potentially by design so um you're gonna see a lot more stuff coming in the years especially in places like mexico city because the people are open uh more there to these things than other places where you're on the you're on your iPhone and you're going to work every day but you're never even thinking about UFOs you're not even a religious person and and I'm not I'm not religious I I don't subscribe to that what I'm saying is religion has taught people that there's a whole world of unexplained there you know we learn about demons and angels we learn about you know big events like Fatima in Portugal and like these crazy things where you know you see a cross of lights in the sky or someone bleeds from their eyes well stigmata like big. all that kind of yeah it's like you're just you're you're so people that are growing up with with these kind of religious teachings are more ready to look up and see something so ufos will show up and do it to them and show up there um and that's pro like i said by design and so um i i think mexico is really really important for the study of that that subject And and how this uh, experience outside the musical environment, uh, exploring other forms of, of of expression like film and books, uh, has impacted your your music? Oh yeah, it's made well with my other band, Angels and Airwaves. It really impacted the way I wrote songs and the way I thought about music and what I wanted to say. And with Blink, it's the same thing. I'm hoping to bring more multimedia and more types of ways for people to experience the music uh, here in the future, um, because I'm doing so many television series and feature films and stuff now uh, and books like i have the ability to maybe bring some of that to blink if the guys are into it and which i think they are um we'll see how that goes but i think blink needs to grow and um and do some do do some things that that just kind of catch people off guard so we don't just keep creating the same album all over again you know we can write any kind of music Um, but we can now do all types of art and, and different forms of media. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds. I have to thank you for for the time. I think we're very excited for the show, and I'm sure that uh, it'll be good. It'll yeah, be good. That I place think, is going to come. It's going to it explode. Be, yeah, kind of like uh, turning disappointment to redemption. That's what? the goal, because we know that we've let the Mexican people down, but we didn't do it on purpose. Like this just happens. It was just bad luck. But to come there and play a stadium, oh my God, like who would have thought, you know? So like we're, we're, we're excited, trust me. Like we're really, really excited. We played one show in Mexico City before we had to cancel those. And it was like, it was so loud. I couldn't even hear the PA system. So like, trust me, we're like we're chomping at the bit to get down there. Yeah. And last, last show of, it, of, of the year as well for you. So it is amazing. last show of the world tour. So that it's a celebration for us. I mean, it's a big deal. 130 some, 130 more some shows. Like this is the last one. So thank you for for the time. Yeah.